Hello, my name is Ross Marshall, and uh, we're discussing universal reconciliation versus orthodox teachings of uh, eternal damnation. Uh, some get saved, and most don't. Uh, it's, uh, the difference between the widespread traditional view of limited atonement versus universally applied atonement to all mankind. Now, we may ask, uh, like we were talking in the previous sections about the will of God, what, why would God be willing such a universal restoration of all people and all of creation? Uh, it goes back to uh, the ancient past that somehow, quote, uh, it all went to hell somehow. <laughs> and somehow, some way, I believe, according to what scriptures taught me, after 30 years of fighting and arguing and dividing and separating and sectarianism and denominationalism and par partialism and theological confusion <coughs> and this hidden question of well, who's going to get saved eventually and who isn't. Uh, we already discussed, you know, um, God tells us to pray for all men, uh, and that's questionable, I guess, uh, to a lot of people. Well, let's just pray for them. That doesn't mean anything. Uh, well, it does. Uh, and uh, to, uh, to resolve this thing, we have to build a new cosmology. Um, who started it, who it belongs to, uh, no matter what's happened, uh, we have to determine uh, who eventually ends up owning it like he said he would, and who it eventually belongs to, as he said it should, it belongs to him. We're going to discuss in this uh, section 5, uh, titled, The Alpha and Omega of God. <coughs> uh, we'll start by reading, uh, I've written this down to be detailed and concise, uh, not off the top of my head. Uh, uh, plus the fact that I no way I could remember such verses. So I'll be reading uh, what I'd like to say from my papers. The Alpha and Omega of God. Jesus said through St. John that he is the, quote, Alpha and, and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Revelations 1, 8, 11, 21, verse 6, and 22, verse 13. What does this actually mean, and what is the significance of this title? Let us analyze the Greek text to, to withdraw what we can as to the meaning. The Greek has it in Revelations 1, verses 8, 11, 21, verse 6, Chapter 22, verse 13. Now, as before, off and on, what I've done is uh, written the verse out in, in the received Greek text. Underneath it, I drop straight down and put the exact English transliteration underneath it. I won't read the Greek in Greek, uh, but uh, with the dictionary and the concordant literal translation, which is hard to kind of read uh, uh, compared to the beautiful King James uh, well, King James English. Uh, here we have accuracy and it's from this we derive our doctrine, not from poetry. So we have 1, 8 and 22 verse 13. Quote, I am the Alpha and the Omega original and the finish consummation. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last uh, before most. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the original and the finish beginning consummation. <coughs> beginning and the consummation. In the above verses, we see that Jesus is the Alpha, or the origin, the beginning. Uh, the word Alpha is the first letter in the Greek alphabet, which is a word derived from it. The root word of alphabet is Alpha, and 
he also said he was the omega, or the finish, the telos in Greek, which means consummation. In verse 111, he terms himself as ho eskatos, the last. The Greek meaning of protos, first, is before most. In beginning, in, in being the uh, protos, uh, if I pronounce the Greek correctly, or before most, Christ must be the after most when he says he is the telos, or consummation of all things. If he is going to be the before most, we must also, he must also be the after most. It appears that the word most here is in reference to himself being the foremost of all things created. Actually, the before all. Now, a question comes up here of, what was Christ before? Or what is it that Christ is before? And the Bible gives us the answer. Jesus is the one that was before the creation. And Christ was the foremost, the first, the beginning, or creator of all the cosmos and everything that is in it, whether it be in heaven, in earth, visible or invisible, thrones, dominions, principalities, or powers. Colossians 1.16, For, as St. Paul understood, just as we should understand, by him were all things created, Colossians 1.16, and thus we can further understand that, quote, by him all things consist, Colossians 1.17. In being the foremost, Christ is the one that brought everything created into existence. Now, as the creator of everything, Christ also must be the owner of everything, not just in the past, but of all that is at present, and therefore all that is to in the end. For he said that he was the telos, the consummation of all. The word telos is not only a word used to denote some end or event horizon, but is, is the most significant title name of Jesus Christ himself. Jesus said, I am the telos, or the consummation, and not just the cause of it. This, of course, in light of the fact he is the beginning, makes him the finishing end result, or eschatos, of all things. Of all, whether things or not. Uh, as the title of the movie series, Final Destination, demonstrates, the final end result of people is into death. But Christ is claiming here that he is the final destination of all things, and nothing will escape him as the telos, or finality, and the owner of all. To be the maker of all in the past, and the owner of all in the future, he must be the reconciler of all now. All things were created by him and through him, Romans 11.36, because all things were created for him, Colossians 1.16. Needless to say, but we will, we say we will, anyway, all things, including all people, John 1, 7, will be reconciled to him, Colossians 1, 20, because God, quote, sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved, you know, might, should, will, from God's wrath. John 3.17 and Romans 5.9. Job is ever so true when he said that, quote, the soul of every living thing and the breath of all mankind is in his hand. Job 12.10. Job is speaking in the present tense. And it makes sense to say that if Christ is the beginning and the end, he must also be the middle as well. If he is the first letter of the alphabet and the last letter of the alphabet, he must by necessity be the middle of the alphabetical letters as well. So, if we understand that Christ was before and is the before, and that all came from his hand, and that all is in his hand now, according to Job, then as he is also the after all, 
and the actual consummation itself, we can under, easily under, understand that as, quote, the finality or telos of all, every created thing must end in his hand, possession. He is the consummation of all creation, and he resides in heaven presently until the time of re restitution of all, which God spoke through the mouth of of his holy prophets throughout the ages, Acts 3.21. There are, I must admit, very few. If we pray on words, play, oops, excuse me, if we play on words, we may say that Christ is the foremost now because he was the beforemost in the past and because he will be the aftermost in the end. God, after all, will be the all in all that filleth all in all things, Ephesians 1.23, after everything is subjected to him, 1 Corinthians 15.28. Now, though there are diversities of opinion upon this subject, most even denying this truth, quote, it is the same God which worketh all in all, 1 Corinthians 12.6, both the good and the bad, the truth and the falsity, the divine contrast, the divine paradox, the, the, the divine uh, maker of good and evil, and even making all stubborn so that he may have mercy upon all. Romans 11.32 <clears throat> Let's hear these verses in Revelation. Jesus Christ is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved all humanity and washed everyone's sins in his own blood and is making us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be all glory and all dominion throughout the ages of the ages. Behold, Christ is coming with clouds and all the eyes of humanity shall see him, even they that pierced him. Oh, the dead? And all the kindred of the earth shall wail because of him. Revelations 1, 5-7, and continuing. Behold, the tabernacle of God is with humanity, and he will dwell with every one of them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with all mankind, and be their God. And he shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. For Christ said, Behold, I make all created things new. And Jesus said unto me, St. John, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Revelation 21, 3 through 5. Christ, the Son of God, and heir to all that was created. God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, in bracket, by whom also he made the worlds, eons, ages, planets, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Hebrews 1, 1 through 3. Christ, Son of God, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the ending. <coughs> Christ, his entitlement to all, in the beginning and in the consummation. Okay, I've divided the page, I've got quotes here, compared to the Alpha, i got the quotes of the Omega here, so you see my eye go from here to here, you'll see I'm bouncing from Alpha to Omega statements. 
And he said unto me, I have become the Alpha, the origin, and the Omega, and the consummation. To him who is thirsting I shall be given out of the spring of the water of life gratuitously. Revelations 21.6 I'm the Alpha, the first, the origin, and the Omega, the last, and the consummation. Revelations 22.13 Creation, original creation, holy and ordered, in the middle, Keha. Consummation, restoration, reconciliation, renewed creation, reordered and holy. Over here, the universe of creation, creation from a single thought and word, God created the cosmos in the beginning. God created by the Elohim, the Trinity Godhead, the economy of God, were the heavens and the earth, Genesis 1, 1. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the Christ, the beginning of the creation of God, Revelations 3.14. And thou accordingly and originally, Lord, dost found the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hands, Hebrews 1.10, in the middle here, unholy, the universal fall, the world, <clears throat> and when the woman saw the tree and that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree to be desired to make one wise she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave an also unto her husband with her and he did eat and the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden, and they heard the, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden. Hmm. In the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves in the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Genesis three sixty eight. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. Luke seventeen twenty six. Therefore even as through one human sin entered into the world, and through sin death, and thus death passed through into all mankind, on which all sin, Romans 5.12, consequently then, as it was through one offense, and two for all mankind, and two for condemnation. In the middle of the eons, the one obedient Christ, on the other hand, behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, John 1.29, the living God who is the Savior of all men. 1 Timothy 4.10 I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be thy plagues. O grave, hell, I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hid from mine eyes. Hosea 3.13.14 Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Matthew twenty twenty eight. He gave himself a ransom for the sake of all to be testified in due time. First Timothy two six. Even though the modern church denies this, over here, uh, uh, omega statement: the universal restoration. Thus also it is through one just award and two for all mankind and two for life's justifying. Romans five eighteen. Whom the heavens must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God hath spoken to the mouth of his holy prophets since the fallen world of Adam began. That's the A.D. Whom heaven must indeed receive until the times of the restitution of all, which God speaks through the mouth of his holy prophets, whom are from the Adamic eon, past Edenic, a Edenic age. Acts 3.21 Alva for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Revelations 4.11 I mean, this is the Alpha statement. For by him were all things created, that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and visible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. 
all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Colossians 1, 16 through 17. Now we go to the middle. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. Oh, you're easily deceived. Hebrews 2.8. Last statement. The church has built a doctrine around this that not all things will be subjected unto, under him and through him to reconcile the all into him. Peacemaking through the blood of the cross of him through him whether on the earth or in the heavens. Colossians 1.20. For of him, and through him, and to him, are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Or for the ages, up to the beginning of the final state. Romans 11.36. That's a good one. It behoved for to him, through whom be all, and through whom be all, the many sons, and to esteem, leading the original leader of the salvation of them through sufferings to perfect. It's in court of Hebrews 2.10. For even as the woman is out of the man, thus the man also is through the woman, yet all is out of God. 1 Corinthians 11.12. And the all goes back to God. Who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Philippians 3.21 That in the administration of the filling complement of the errors or ages, to head up the all in the anointed Christ, in both the heavens and on the earth, Ephesians 1.10, and hath put all under his feet and gave him to be the head over all to the church, Ephesians 1.22, that in all things he might have preeminence, Colossians 1.18, for it is written, living am I, the Lord is saying, for to me shall bow every knee and every tongue shall be acclaiming God, Romans 14.11. That in the name of Jesus, every knee shall be bowing, celestial and terrestrial and subterranean. Philippians 2.10 And every tongue shall be acclaiming that Jesus Christ is Lord for the glory of God the Father. Philippians 2.11 To the Omega statement. Christ the Savior of all mankind in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh the all after the counsel of his own will. Ephesians 1.11 He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he should be completing or filling the all. Ephesians 4.10 So that if anyone is in Christ, there is a, a new creation. The primitive passed away by. The perceiving, the all, has become a new. Mm. 2 Corinthians 5.17 mm. Those absolute literal translations are sometimes a tongue twister. There's no wonder they put it into the poetic king's English, but it does gloss over. <clears throat> the old has passed away. Be perceiving now the new all has become new. Second Corinthians 5.17 For all of us must be manifested in front of the dais of Christ, that each should be requited toward for that which he puts into practice through the body, whether good or bad. Second Corinthians 5.10 for he subjects all under his feet. Now, whenever he may be saying that all is subject, it is manifest that he is expect, ex, accepted 
which did put the all under him. First Corinthians, First Corinthians fifteen twenty seven. Now, whenever all may be subjected to him, then the Son himself also shall be subjected to him, who subjects all to him, that God may be all in all. First Corinthians fifteen twenty eight. And he sat, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. 